If you watch this channel consistently, you know that two things that I really enjoy are non-traditional ways of data visualization and stock tickers. Luckily for a lot of my recent projects, those two things have gone hand in hand. I picked up this voltmeter the other day on Amazon. I really like the aesthetic of analog components. The physical movement of this rotary gauge makes it a lot more <clears throat> engaging to look at. I feel like it has more personality. I made a short form video the other day about how you can trick many analog components with the digital means of pulse width modulation. Digital systems use binary, where a 5 volt reading means a 1 and a 0 volt reading means 0. This is clearly a different MO from this voltmeter, which can take any of the infinite inputs between 0 and 5 volts. Pulse width modulation is like saying, sure, I can't press a button halfway, or only let half the electricity through with a button, but if I press the button fast enough, and do so so that it, on average it's pressed for one second and then unpressed for one second, it will have the same same effect as only letting half the electricity through. I don't have the option of sending 2.5 volts from the pin of this microcontroller, but I can accomplish the same effective result by sending 5 volts on a 50% PWM duty cycle. That was my thinking with this project anyway, and if you've worked with many ESP boards, you may already realize the mistake that I'm going to make later in this project. The voltmeter was really easy to take apart. Two screws for the housing and two screws for the plate with the voltage readings. I measured the plate and put together a new backdrop, which I then printed on my label maker, cut out, stuck to the plate, and trimmed the excess. The voltmeter was made to take between 0 and 5 volts, with 0 volts being on the far left, but I decided that since the stock market could go up or down, I wanted the needle to be biased so that it would stay in the middle, and I could either raise or drop the voltage accordingly. I thought the S&P 500 would be pretty good for this, because while the gauge does not move very far in either direction, it's also not super common that the S&P moves more than a percent in either direction in one given day. Combine that fact with this gentle logarithmic scale, and I think it's useful and readable at the same time. While I had the case taken apart, I took some video so you can see how these volt gauges work. I just love the cleverness that goes along with these analog components. This needle is attached to what is basically a galvanometer, which is a system that uses a coil and magnets to derive a rotational position. This thin torsion spring you see in the center will bias the needle to a certain position, but when current flows through the coil, it will generate a magnetic field around it, and the interaction between that magnetic field and the magnets on either side of the coil determines the position of the needle. I found that you can change the bias by twisting this little metal bit down here. There's actually a small screw on the front of the housing that lets you be able to do this without taking it apart, but I needed to move the bias by more than that screw would allow. In fact, there's a little stop built in to prevent you from biasing it too far, but by bending that stop upward, it wouldn't stop anymore and I could change the bias as much as I wanted. I put the whole thing back together and started working on my code. For live stock data, I use finhub.io, which is a free stock market API that does not sponsor this channel, but really should. You can get a free API key from them, and by using nearly the same code that I've supplied in previous videos, you can send an HTTPS request to get the current intraday percent change of the S&P 500, or really any stock that you want. Once the code was done, all that was left for the breadboard prototype was hooking everything up. I added a red and a green LED and code to use PWN to change the brightness of these LEDs depending on how large the daily change has been, further down being brighter red and so on. I connected the voltmeter to the ESP8266 and realized the first of the two mistakes that I made. It's easy enough to raise a voltage with a microcontroller, but it's not quite as easy to create a negative voltage. I could probably make some sort of circuit that would switch the inputs and then raise a voltage, which would have the same effect as creating a negative voltage from the perspective of the voltmeter, but I instead opted to take apart the voltmeter again and reset the bias back to the far left. This would mean that when unpowered or unresponsive, the voltmeter would show negative maximum daily change, but I guess that's not a huge deal, and this is just the prototype, so I can work more details out later. It was here that I realized my second big mistake. I mentioned before that 5 volts in a binary system is a 1. This is true on Arduino microcontrollers and a lot of other devices, but not on ESP8266 boards. The logic level on these is 3.3 volts, so that was the maximum voltage that I could have sent out on any given pin. With a left bias on the gauge, that means that I wouldn't be able to get the needle to move past positive one quarter of a percent. It is here that I bid you adieu, dear viewer. I'm going to order some parts from overseas to hopefully figure out and finish this project later. Even if I don't get around to it though, the purpose of this channel has always been, first and foremost, to educate and inspire. So hopefully I've done that, even if I didn't see this project all the way to completion. I'll put links for the voltmeter, the code, and the graphic that I made for this gauge in the description of this video. Thank you so much for watching Christopher's Factory, and a special thank you to everybody that is a patron of Christopher's Factory. I don't paywall any content, so the people that support me on Patreon do so purely and get nothing in return. So a special thank you to those saints that do so. And even if not, I again thank you for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.